Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar of Reconciliation hey, Takes Hard Work computer. Hard Work. Um, Gracie and Eddie will be starting with a prayer for our meeting. And so I ask you to just, um, if you're able to put yourself on mute, um, and Gracie and Eddie, just get started when you're when you're ready. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, got there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you could say. <clears throat> a few quick as well. Um, Want to uh, hands go up to Shwakwell say uh, hands go up to all of you who come to join this webinar, um, and we're going to start off with a with a with a prayer to to bless our our meeting today. Um, <clears throat> please to upset as to Ewias bless our meeting prayer. OCM, Yakukosai. All my relations. One mind, one heart. Great. Thank you so much. Um, here. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining today's webinar on the second um, <coughs> annual National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Um, uh, my name is Lisa, and I'll be facilitating uh, the conversation for us this morning. Um, I am calling in from Vancouver, so I'm on the unceded traditional territories of the Squamish, the Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Um, in my background, I'm a research analyst at a firm Riker and Associates, um, and I've been uh, working with um, working with Gracie for I guess over the past two years, uh, focusing on primary care network evaluation and also supporting this uh, building Indigenous relations webinar series. Um, so yeah, so before we begin the presentation, I just wanted to, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention a few housekeeping items. So the first is that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we wanted to allow people to, you know, share the webinar um, or, or for those that weren't able to attend to be able to um, to learn from today as well. Sorry, I'm just going to mute a few folks here if that's okay. I'll unmute in a second. Um, and yeah, so just as a note, um, just try to please keep yourself on mute um, if if you're able to, and then use the reaction button at the bottom of your screen uh, to raise your hand if you have a question. Um, so uh, Gracie and Eddie will be um, presenting for about uh, an hour or so. We'll have a discussion together and then we'll open it up to questions from the audience as well. Um, so I'll be looking in the chat where you can post any questions you have throughout the webinar today. Um, if we don't get to all of the questions, um, we will be circulating a bit of a feedback survey where you can, um, you know, let us know any questions that you have that you weren't that weren't answered, um, or you know how you how you felt about the the webinar today. Um, and lastly, I just want to recognize that you know today might be might be difficult for for some folks on the call, so we will be um, sharing some free support resources that are available um, to everyone today, um, just in case you want to you know take a moment afterwards to reflect and, and would like some support. Um, and also feel free to take pauses on your own, take water breaks, um, whatever you need to do. Okay, I think that's it for housekeeping. Let me just go to some round of introductions. Uh, so I wonder if Gracie, if you wanted to start um, just with uh, some information about, about yourself um, and then we can get into it. Let me just see if I can unmute you. I'm good. There you are. Okay, great. Uh, Ace Whale, uh, Clacy Tilsqui. Uh, my name is Gracie Kelly. My family roots are from Thawale, Casta Halflip. Sawali First Nations and Haklip, and I'm proud to say I'm a Chawaiic uh, member and also a member of the Stolen Nation, uh, which is home to 24 First Nations communities along the Fraser River. Thank you. Great, thank you. And uh, let's pass it over to Eddie. OCMCIA. Titlam spath to one was quick. Taliso Quasqua. My uh, my Wilmok name is uh, Titlam spath, means singing bear, and 
Um, I, my roots go back to the, go to uh, the Squaw First Nation, and I'm honored to serve as a counselor there now. Um, I'm also president of the uh, Wild Salmon Defenders Alliance, and um, my uh, my roots on uh, my father's side go uh, to Chihuahua First Nation um, on his uh, mother's side, and and uh, all the way up, <clears throat> no, actually on his father's side and and on his mother's side. His roots uh, go all the way up to Shakwet Mohulu, the land of the uh, Shushwa people. Um, so uh, it's a it's a, it's an honor, you know, to to be here and spend some time with you. Uh, I've traveled quite extensively all across Canada. Uh, I grew up in Setsil, Quebec. I went to school down in Prince Edward Island. Got a little BA there, and and then. Uh, uh, I went back to Quebec and worked with the uh, Laurentian Alliance of Métis Non-Status Indians and uh, went to Montreal and um, I got involved with the Friendship Center movement and uh, <clears throat> spent some time with uh, with uh, um, the uh, the movement to uh, to ensure that our uh, our uh, Aboriginal rights and title were included in the uh, Constitution of Canada. And uh, I came back to, to uh, British Columbia in 1990 and worked with, uh, with uh, Lytton First Nation as a band manager. And um, then I moved back to, uh, to uh, Chilliwack here and got involved with Stalin Nation, uh, Yachtsmith, uh, back to Stalin Nation and uh, now I'm so happy to to uh, work with uh, with uh, my people as a, as a counselor. Always see him. Yeah, you side to throw it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eddie. And um, yeah, we're really honored to have you here with us today as as well. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll pass it over for Stephen Stephen Reichert. So he's um, the owner of Reichert and Associates, the evaluation firm that I also work for. Um, if you would mind uh, just introducing yourself as well today. And I'll see that hopefully you are unmuted. Stephen, you, I'm not sure if you're trying to speak, but you are muted at this time. I thought, there you only go. You could, I thought only you <laughs> had the power to unmute me. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's a beautiful morning in the Vancouver, in the Vancouver area. I'm joining again from the unceded lands of the Musqueam, Tsleil Tooth, and Squamish people. Um, since COVID, uh, I have been working primarily from my home office, um, which is situated on the unceded and shared traditional territories of the Squamish Nation and Lillooet people. Um, last year, we had the honor to support Gracie uh, in working towards reconciliation by creating a webinar such as what we have today. And, you know, immediately after that webinar, our team met to talk about the discussion, the questions that came as, as well as some of our personal journeys, some of our personal stories and our connections. I just thought that was such a powerful thing. And we all have a story. I think back to even some of my own when I grew up. I grew up in Saskatchewan, which at the time I had no idea, but it was Treaty 4 lands. Um, we didn't learn about that. Um, and I realized that, you know, over time, we have learned so much um, as we move towards reconciliation. Uh, in university, um, I got a very strange summer job one summer in Larange, Saskatchewan, and it took me, which is a predominantly uh, Indigenous community in kind of central uh, northern Saskatchewan. And I got a job working with Mississippi Broadcasting, which is an all Indigenous broadcaster. And it was my first real living experience of working and living in an Indigenous, uh, predominantly Indigenous community. Um, I had no idea. Um, these are all things that we learn as we go through life. Over the last 
several years, I have come to start to reflect on the impacts of colonization, my role in it, where I'm situated in it, and my role in doing something about reconciliation. As was the case last year, today is another opportunity to think about who we are and how we got here. We all have personal stories, and as we listen to Gracie today, um, I just encourage you to think about your own journey, where you're at, and how you got there. Thank you, Stephen. All right, so I think without uh, further ado, I guess we can yeah, open up the presentation. So uh, Gracie, please please go ahead. Awesome. This is our land. We need to look after everything that belongs to us. This morning before I came here, I was um, had a quick chat with my mom, uh, who is a second generation residential school survivor of Kamloops Residential School era. And uh, I said to her, what does, how do you feel about today, mom? And she goes, it's really nice to see people thinking about us a little bit more. And I said, and another thought came to my mind, mom, is that we're seeing more caring, more acknowledgement of the people around us and how to support everybody. And she goes, yeah, it's very, um, it's very comforting to see and to hear and participate and or be aware of the community walks and um, events that are happening within the communities. So it's, you know, when we acknowledge a traditional territory, we are thinking of our elders, like my mom and our aunties, or those have gone into the spirit world. And we want to acknowledge all of their hard work that has brought us to where we are today. So today I'm sharing on behalf of the Chawayak and pull out, but I also want to acknowledge the Stalo and the Inkakatma. And the way I like to share these words is to say I'm honored, I'm grateful, I am value, I acknowledge the wonderful elders, I, valid, I acknowledge all the communities who have created to gather this safe space for us to live, work, and play on. So to begin with, I always like to say, I'm honored to provide health and wellness services within the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territories. The communities of the Chawayak, the Palaut, the Stalo, and the Inkakapmuk, Seth Quilmuth are the First Nations people that we work with within our territory here of the 22 communities from Boothroyd to Chalawak. Today we respectfully um, engage truthfully about Indigenous perspectives. This work of celebrating Indigenous, the seven caring teachings, listening, supporting, sharing, trust, helping, respect, and healing is all a foundation of Indigenous worldviews on how we take care of each other and have taken care of each other for generations. The words today is shared through heart work. It's through words of taking action. It's, it's words of sharing from Indigenous perspectives. These are truthful and caring words and thoughts that will support our Indigenous today. We thank you in advance for respecting these teachings and know we are sharing from the heart. Thank you for being able to be here with good intention and in order to have good intention is to be of one mind, let's amat, let's athala, and have that common approach of that respectful engagement. So thank you. So I think we were um, hoping to do some just reflecting, looking back, you know, we had this uh, a webinar on the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation last year. Um, I think, Stephen, you touched a base on some of your reflections from that experience. I don't know 
if you had anything else you wanted to add, um, or Gracie and Eddie as well, would love to hear um, your reflections too. Um, after after last year, um, our team our team left the webinar um, and we met. Uh, we did a little bit of a retreat, and we really did talk about you know where we were at um, individually. Um, with truth and with reconciliation and understanding where we were. Um, we talked about the, the things that we still needed to work on, the things we needed to do better and how we were gonna do that, how we were gonna approach that, um, both from a, you know, how we do our work, but also how we live our lives and what that, what that looks like. Um, and we shared our ideas with one another. And I think that, you know, over the past, 12 months we are doing some things differently we are we are moving in a direction i don't think we're even close to being there um we're always looking at ways to understand to do something better to do something safer to make sure that our work um reflects uh communities in a good way that we're not that we're not doing any harm that we are embracing and understanding and learning every day. And I think that, you know, we will do more after today. There will be things that um, that come from both Gracie and, and Eddie that will that will support our our understanding and our thoughts on our way forward. I also think that um, you know, we'll continue to work with Gracie um, and have her guidance to make sure that that we are uh, you know we are moving forward we will make mistakes and you know th that will happen and we're going to own that but i do think that um that we're on the right we're on the right direction and we're doing something and i would hope that you know for those who are on the webinar last year um there will be a, an opportunity later to really talk about you know what you have done over the last uh over the last year or maybe a lifetime that has uh, that is moving towards reconciliation. Great. Thanks so much, Stephen. Um, Gracie, yeah, just wondering what your thoughts are, your reflections from from last year. Um, what was just? I was just so grateful that I was planning on doing a webinar about reconciliation, and September thirtieth came to be, and so it was just really. Uh, just an honorable moment to offer some reflections and the connection to the health calls to action and really kind of identifying uh, where we are at and how do we support uh, from local communities kind of sharing the value of the indigenous community engagement to bring awareness I believe the first national day you know, in recognizing that it is a tragic loss and it's part of history. And um, we are sharing today on behalf of the 215 uh, of 10 loops. Um, so history doesn't repeat itself. It's so important to identify um, that we are learning, sharing and developing more awareness on how to support each other. And how do we do that? Through uh, collective voices, uh, through Indigenous mentors, leaders, knowledge keepers, through the wonderful survivors and intergenerational survivors and generations after who will continue to develop and work together to promote healing and support each other in every way we can. By being here today, your participation is showing us that you also care, that you also believe in this process to continue this learning journey. And I see it as a lifelong learning journey. Uh, we'll continue to learn and develop uh, more awareness of what we value as culture on the land, culture and how it connects with people and culture and how it connects with identity. Thanks so much, Gracie. Um, Eddie, I wondered about yourself, kind of your reflections from, from last year, um, from 
Yeah, I know you weren't um, uh, a speaker at, at that last year's webinar, but um, yeah, just kind of your reflections on that first National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Um, the truth and uh, reconciliation; those are those are huge, uh, huge things. Truth, truth really matters, and and the uh, two the two hundred and fifteen uh, uh, that were found at Tekamlubs uh, Um they really woke up uh, Canada. And uh, since uh, since the first two fifteen had been found, there has been uh, many more found uh, across. Uh, Across Canada, including in a, in our territory, so um, <clears throat> uh, it's uh, it was uh, it was a, a shock, you know, not only uh, like uh, uh, to the to many people across Canada, um, it was something that uh, we knew all along that uh, some of our people never came home, and where where did they wind up? You know, well now we. Now we know where they are. Some people um, tried to make it their way back home, and uh, <clears throat> they died on the way home. You know, by the railroad tracks in the winter in some places. Um, so uh, there's much uh, there's much work to be done uh, in, in relation to um, that report that was put out in in plain sight. Um, <clears throat> Many uh, controversies are 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 uh, storming around uh, some of the uh, racism that has been uh, uh, exposed, you know, on uh, on the media, um, and <clears throat> uh, especially in the health system. Um, and the uh, and there is a, there's still a. Uh, much work to be done uh, related to the missing and murdered uh, Indigenous women <clears throat> and their children. Um, we still have uh, we still have high rates of uh, our people in the in the prisons and uh, and in care. So uh, uh, it, it it all adds up to how hard it is, you know, to to really take a hard look at the truth and understand the truth. And uh, and respond to the truth with meaningful action. Um, there has been some progress, yep. There has been some progress, but uh, there's uh, there's much work to be done. Uh, today, I looked at uh, <clears throat> on TV, and and uh, uh, there is uh, there has been a, a move. I, I forget the name of the agency that did it, but uh, there was a woman on TV who was. Uh, um, celebrating or or honoring uh, Peter Bryce, who is a, who is a doctor, and uh, <clears throat> must have been around the turn of the century when uh, when he did a he did a full report on um, the atrocities that were taking place in uh, Indian residential schools, and. Uh, he told he, he told the stories about malnutrition. He told the stories about the the, the very deplorable conditions in uh, Indian residential schools, and the report uh, didn't go anywhere. Um, it was uh, it was rejected uh, during that time. So when we compare what is uh, been happening at that time and compared to what's going on today, uh, we can we can uh, see. There, there, there is some um, uh, progress made, but uh, uh, there's there, there's much uh, there's much more to be done um, on the political scale, on the political in the political arena. There's uh, um, many uh, issues related to the uh, doctrine of discovery and and what needs to be done with that. Um, land claims uh, that needs to be done uh, uh, regarding honoring, you know, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People and um, uh, settling outstanding issues like uh, uh, land claims that that's based on non-extinguishment of, uh, of Indigenous rights instead of extingu extinguishment of Indigenous rights. But there is hope 
there's uh, there's there's always opportunities. There's uh, uh, a growing understanding of uh, of uh, what really took place, and there is uh, um, uh, the hard work road towards uh, uh, achieving true reconciliation, and um, every Canadian um, has a responsibility to to do their part, to do our part. Um, and so uh, I, uh, I take heart, you know, with, uh, with uh, a lot of people who have, uh, who have stepped forward and, and, and uh, expressed how much they want to, to, to make meaningful change. And it starts at the grassroots and it goes, uh, you know, um, all the way to uh, municipal, provincial, federal, and international uh, realms of authority. So, <clears throat> so thank you for allowing me to share a little bit on this, Alicia. Thank you so much, Eddie. All right. Um, another question that, that came up quite a bit in, in last year's webinar was um, the fact that the, the Pope, there wasn't an apology from the Pope around, um, you know, the Catholic Church's role in the residential schools. Um, and then we, we know that in, in this year, that apology or an apology was made. Um, so I know that's something that, that folks were, you know, wondering about how some reactions to that apology um, and some, some thoughts around that. And so I think that uh, Gracie and Eddie, you both had some thoughts you wanted to share on that today as well. I appreciate the words of Justice Mary Sinclair. Without truth, justice, and healing, there can be no genuine reconciliation. My action reaction to the apology on July 25th is that I didn't hear uh, the words the words of the next steps. I didn't hear of the weight of the action that can be taken place. So it's really, you know, there needs to be some plan ahead to share um, so that we could have that justice, more than just awareness as to the importance of what had happened is cultural genocide. I did not hear those words. I heard words of cultural destruction. I've heard words of forced assimilation. Uh, so I think of as well, each time we are hearing uh, the words of those who have never made it home, um, we've got to reflect again on the real truth is that uh, this is a residential school era, a period of time that has really taken away Indigenous identity, culture, being, community, everything for more than just one generation, for several generations. So now it's up to us to ensure that we make that path of what is reconciliation, to create that awareness individually within our work organizations and strategically plan out how can we support Indigenous, Métis and Inuit, 60 Scoop, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. We need to continue on the work of creating that opportunity to gather, that heart work to gather, that collaboration, is if we just let it kind of be as a day, a day away from work, then where is the justice in that? I like to call today as a day of reflection, it's a day of reflection to identify how are we making action towards a better tomorrow? for our future generations and beyond. Thank you. Thanks, Gracie. Um, I see that Laverne has uh, your hand raised as well, but um, yeah, maybe I'll ask um, Eddie to speak or share his reaction as well, and then um, I'll open it to you, Laverne, as well. Thank you so much for, for being here with us. So, um, Eddie, if you'd like to go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, um, what uh, one Indigenous people uh, meant by an apology was uh, also something else that would be uh, that would uh, that would show a genuine uh, apology, and that is uh, 
that is uh, contributing, uh, you know, resource, actual resources to uh, to do some of the the repairs that uh, need to be done, you know, in the community and in and in the area of uh, of healing, um, and um, uh, honoring, you know, the 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 the, the culture and the, the the spiritual significance that uh, that uh, we have embraced you know before christianity came to to uh to our territories um uh if a if there isn't something that is uh that is attached you know in terms of meaningful action um then an apology or apologies are just uh, empty words uh they're hollow they don't mean anything um in today's world it's uh it's it's good to see, uh, you know, a, an institution like uh, like uh, uh, the Catholic Church in particular, um, kind of uh, feel uncomfortable, but uh, struggle and wrestle, you know, with uh, how they're going to uh, respond, and and uh, we see that uh, that uh, um, the uh, the Pope has been uh, trying to still um uh sidestep uh, accountability for 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 what happened and and blamed it and trying to blame it on uh maybe uh some bad apples you know in the in the in the church but as we uh as uh, as things uh come to light uh, we see that uh that it has been uh, quite pervasive and um the Catholic Church at all levels, right up to the uh, to the Pope, uh, uh, should not be trying to sidestep uh, accountability for, for for the atrocities that took place. Osia. Thank you, Eddie. Um, so yeah, we were going to be holding questions until the end of the webinar, but I see Laverne. Um, thank you for being with us here today, and um, just wanted to welcome you to just if you had a few shot a uh, few words to share. Um, and then we'll pass it back to Gracie if that's okay. I'll just um, mute. Oh, sorry. We, yeah, it's still on mute, Laverne. Um, No, it's not working. Yeah, it might be, yeah, you're unmuted on my screen. Um, oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, Laverne. Okay, I was just playing and pushing buttons. I don't know <laughs> what I pushed, but okay. Um, my name is Laverne Victor and I'm from Chiam First Nation out in Rosedale. And I am a survivor of residential school in 60 Scoop. Um, I have so many comments to make on just a few things that you guys have been talking about already. I don't know where to begin. Um, I wanted to comment on the, on the 215 from Tulunka. I can't pronounce the name properly, from Kamloops. Um, that was actually one of the first residential schools I attended at the age of four. Um, since the first findings in one of the residential schools afterwards at the age of seven or nine, I witnessed someone being taken out into the woods to be buried in an unmarked grave. So my heart has been very heavy because I don't know what school this happened at. I'm just waiting patiently for them to finish searching all the schools so that my mind can be at ease that she's been found and really be able to go home and rest in peace. Um, I, 
I also wanted to comment on uh, the apologies. Wow. Um, having somebody else tell me that they're sorry for something that somebody else did absolutely holds no weight to, to me as a survivor. Um, that's just like if, if anyone here would, were, were to say, well, we're sorry that they did that. Well, I, I, I know I'll never hear from the people who abused me in every way possible while I was at residential schools. Um, I know I'll never get a, a true apology. I know nobody will, there will be no justice served to all the people who abused us while at residential school in every way possible. Um, and that's something that we've had to learn to live with. Um, I was mentioning earlier on my Facebook that the hurt and the pain, the memories, the nightmares, there's nowhere for them to go. So we're thankful for all the people around us who helped to make us laugh and smile and enjoy what time we have left here. That's a big part of the healing is, is being loved and to love and to be happy because my whole childhood was, was not um, I, I think for now, that's all I want to share. Um, I, uh, I want to thank you all for having this. I, due to health reasons, I, I don't want to be out there in public in an enclosed building. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful that you're having this here today and, um, all my relations. Thank you so much, Laverne, for, for sharing that with us. It's, um, yeah, I'm, we're just so grateful that you're here with us today um, and for sharing your, your thoughts on, on what we've been talking about so far. Um, I do want to pass the, this back to you, to Gracie. I just thought it would be good to take a moment um, and to want to hear your, your thoughts, Laverne. So I thank you for, for sharing that with us. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, we, we know that this is a, quite a difficult day for many people and we will be sharing, there's some resources out there. So I'll have a, a staff, a staff of mine, um, to, to connect with you, let you know what those are, if, if you're not aware of them already. So we'll just message you those. Thank you so much, Laverne. All right. Um, Gracie, I'll pass it over to you. Sorry for the, sorry for the minor pause, but, um, I thought it was important to, yeah, to hear from Laverne. We're going on to the next slide. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Laverne, for sharing. I just wanted to honor you as a survivor and the family and the community. And uh, we are here for you, Laverne. And I uh, just just want to acknowledge, um, I'll be checking in on you later just to see how you're doing. So uh, thank you. Um, have this beautiful Survivors Flag uh, National Center for Truth and Reconciliation. Thought it's just so fitting to really um, identify the beautiful work that's happening with all the artwork that is promoting um, Orange Shirt Day uh, within all of our communities throughout Turtle Island. And the true meaning is every child matters. With the work of all of these wonderful designs from the artists' hearts, it's really sharing their story of what they believe in is every heart matters. It's just so humbling to see schools and organizations getting together and saying, this is how we support our Indigenous. This is how we start to learn and provide teachings amongst each other that this is really, really important. Yes, it's not just one day a year, but it's more than that. And it's working through each season, each Silalem to divine, to decide and become 
and build that more consistency as to what is it what does it entail to support indigenous worldviews, cultural identity and teachings? Seeing this flag and I said, I needed to identify uh, what it was on how the definition, just a couple of words here from the website. The survivor's flag is an expression of remembrance meant to honor residential school survivors and all the lives and communities impacted by the residential school system. The family and the children and the seeds below the ground represent the spirits of the children who never returned home. Although they have always been present, they are now seen and searched for. The eagle feather represents the creator's spirit is among us. It is depicting pointing upwards with mirrors how it's held when one speaks their truth. Eddie, if you can share a little bit more about your eagle feather teachings that we talked about the other day, that would be very nice to hear. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, this is a beautiful flag and uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, feather um, and when we uh, when we hold a feather like this, it's a uh, it's an acknowledgement of uh, of the eagle spirit that carries our our prayers to our Creator and our Chachashuli Spakas, one feather, one mind, one heart, <clears throat> um, brings us to uh, um, a center where we can we can uh, really really connect with um with our our uh, uh, spiritual guides our ancestors um and take comfort that uh that uh, we're never 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 alone you know we we always have uh uh more help than than we 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 sometimes think um and uh that's why our our spiritual ceremonies are are so important you know to us to have groundness and uh, be in the generous present moment where we can um, seize the opportunities that are that are before us um, and so uh, I take great heart you know from uh, from the, the spiritual people who uh, who pass on such uh, powerful teachings about uh, about uh, returning, returning to wholeness, and uh, um, and uh, and that's uh, that's of such great significance when uh, you look at the attempts of uh, of uh, of colonialism to divide to divide us um, to uh, uh, disengage uh, you know the the young people from the older ones and to to take away the language uh, when we have that spiritual strength. You know, to uh, to dust ourselves off and and uh, to say, yeah, they uh, they took a lot. Of, they, they they tried to destroy us, but but uh, we have a we have a beautiful uh, spirit, a beautiful resilience that uh, that is within us. And one step at a time, we'll take back. You know what uh, what belongs to us. We will take our rightful place. You know, in this uh, um, in this world. And um, <clears throat> they tried to take our language away. Um, I, uh, I for one, uh, uh, like to 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 learn uh, my my language. You know, one phrase at a time, one word at a time. Every time I do that, um, I can say that's the, the residential school and colonialism couldn't take that away from me, and uh, I celebrate that. I have ways to go to, to work towards fluency, but uh, I need to do that. And um, all the uh, all the efforts that we uh, we make, you know, to 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 make sure that uh, that uh, we protect what uh, what belongs to us, um, like our salmon and our water, and uh, 
our land, uh, all of that. Uh, uh, we have lots of work to do. So if we focus on those things, we center ourselves and focus on on that, then uh, then we can um, uh, rise up, chalius, rise up, and uh, and move forward. Um, move forward. Sometimes uh, people say we need to heal and uh, and work towards the future at the same time. It's it's true. Where this is this is how we need to be now. And in today's world, we need to look at uh, the world with uh, with two eyes. You know, the two eyed seeing, two two world views. We need to understand both worlds. But when we uh, when we come to 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 understand, um, we have a chance. You know, to to uh, through through reconciliation and through uh, through uh, uh, efforts. Uh, that are mean, meaningful. Um, we can uh, we can work together and, and return to a sense of wholeness where um, we can find our, our our rightful place in the court and measure of uh, of uh, Canadian uh, uh, society. So uh, that's uh, that's what the uh, uh, the one feather uh, means to me. Ocean. Really love these words of unity. Um, Eddie has a let's up boss. Sorry, Eddie, I can't remember the last part of the word for unity, so you'll be able to share that. Um, so in connection to the unity on what it is, it's developing the relationships with the land, with each other on the land and continued building awareness of all of these wonderful education and digital indigenous credible resources of the calls to action, missing and murdered indigenous women's, uh, the UNDRIP, the In Plain Sight, and of course the National Truth and Reconciliation resources. Really is believing in unity, the Kalmut set, believing in to create healthy relationships with one another, to build a stronger nation together. Take it over to you, Eddie, to talk some more. Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> um, we have a lot of work to do uh, amongst ourselves um, for to work towards this uh, this uh, unity. Let's ask Kualoa unity um, and work. With uh, let samat one mind, let satala one heart, um, and uh, uh, when the the two uh, fifteen were first found at uh, Tekamlut, uh, um our our holy people, our our ones that uh, wear the paint, our ones that uh, connect, you know, uh, with the with the ancestors uh, through ceremony, they. Uh, when they heard uh, uh, what took place up there, they responded immediately, and uh, they got together and and they decided to go up to uh, to Kamloops and and uh, bring their canoes. And uh, when they went up to bring those, uh, <coughs> when they when they went up there, the intent was uh, to get our our um, our, our uh, people who connect with uh, with the, the other side. Um, they did ceremony, and um, they saw the uh, the ones that could, can um, uh, connect with the other side uh, were actually able to uh, to see, you know, the the uh, the little ones on the other side, and uh, and they talked to them in our language. Uh, they talked with uh, some of the older ones uh, that were with them, who were watching over them. And they asked them, you know, to they they invited them to come and and uh, be in the canoe with them, and uh, and uh, encourage them that they they have a place, they have a home to go to, and that uh, that uh, they can we can take them home. Um, and so uh, uh, 
there were we know that there were uh, there were uh, quite a few of our people who winded up being in uh, in uh, the residential school up there, and so uh, <clears throat> um, they uh, some of them stayed, but some of them uh, 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 jumped on that uh, uh, those canoes that they brought up there, and um, and so they uh, they brought them home. They brought them home and. They brought them down to uh, uh, our village at uh, at Squa, and uh, they did more ceremony, and uh, they did these burning ceremonies, and uh, they create these uh, sacred fires, and they uh, and they uh, uh, burn uh, burn clothes and food, you know, and uh, gifts, you know, that uh, that they know that the little ones would uh, really appreciate. And so uh, <clears throat> when they did that ceremony, uh, where there are quite a few witnesses, you know, from our community who were watching and, and looking at what was happening. And so um, uh, the ones uh, who uh, were conducting the ceremony, they, they, they said that, uh, <clears throat> they explained uh, to us that uh, they, these, these young ones were so happy they were they were thrilled. They were looking at these nice new clothes that uh, that they were wearing now. They were given, and uh, and they were so bright and cheery. And uh, they had uh, full tummies, and they heard the songs, and they were so happy. They were they were they were dancing around there. They were so happy, and and um, <laughs> the older ones that uh, winded up being with them asked. Uh, asked uh, members of our families, you know, to line up. And so we, we lined up and, uh, and uh, they said that, they pointed at us and they said, look how you are together. I said, though they are together like that on the other side. And their message to you is that you as families, you as people at this uh, community, at the community levels, you need to uh, drop your differences. You need to uh, look at each other and, and uh, with love. You need to look at each other with uh, respect, and uh, and learn to learn to work together. Um, and uh, that's unity. They're unified on the other side. They want you to be uh, in unity like that as well. And so, uh, if you continue to if you if you heed this message. You know, to to work together in a good way, um, learn to work together in a good way, and carry through. That was the message that was given to them: work together in a good way. And so, there was a <clears throat> um, a, a big thunderbird that uh, that. Uh, that showed up and uh, it uh, made those uh, workers back away up. And, uh, and the Thunderbird was there to, to, uh, to wake people up to the truth about the beauty of, uh, of, uh, of belonging, the beauty of the strength of the spirit that we have. And, um, and that, uh, that people need to remember all of this, the whole truth, the beauty of who we are, as well as uh, the truth about what uh, colonialism tried to destroy, and um, and now we now we can uh, use that truth so we can stand up in unity, and so uh, uh, that was a very powerful powerful uh, message that came across the fire. Um, and <clears throat> when they uh, when, when they finished the uh, the ceremony, the, the, there were other young ones that uh, needed to carry on, you know, the, to other villages. And the, uh, the the older ones that were with them uh, said that they would uh, they would guide them and take them home because they, they 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 felt like uh, so happy that uh, that the ones that belonged to Squa were were in a good place now. They were home. They belonged. They are strong, and uh, this is uh, 
this is a, a message that not only needed to wake up as us as uh, as Wilmot people, but needed to wake up the uh, uh, Canadian society all across all across the lands um, of the Indigenous peoples. And so um, it's something that uh, I always uh, wanted to to promote in the in the work that I do. Um, when my uh, dear uh, uh, sister uh, uh, relative <clears throat> Placey Mukwia, uh, when she uh, when she started off with those words, you know, um, um, that means this is our territory. We need to take good care of uh, everything that we have here. Um, and when I talk to people about that, uh, um, how we need to begin the work, acknowledging this. Um, I tell people who come from uh, many other territories, who from from, uh, from around the world, who come to uh, to 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 live and work and play in our, in our territory. I always tell them, you know, that's what that's the way we need to be. And now that you have come to share our land, you too must step forward and work together with us um, to make sure that we we can leave this land, we can leave these waters, we can lead all the things that we've been given by our Chacha uh, Shuli, so that the next seven generations down the road can benefit from what we do together. And so uh, uh, it's uh, sometimes hard to, uh, to, to, to uh, get that message and let it sink deeply you know, in the hearts of other people who have come into our territory, it's hard. It's a, it's been a challenge, but it's but it's it's working. The more the more we repeat it, the more we get out there and and show that that goodwill. Um, we look to the goodwill of others, you know, to to come and work with us, you know, so that uh, so that we can protect uh, what sustains life, um, which which sustains. Uh, um, the land and the waters and the resources. When we call it our resources, we call it our skakamis. We call it uh, the gifts that come from our sacred life spirit. That's, uh, that's our gifts and they're precious. And uh, we consider them as our relatives. Um, and so those, uh, uh, that, that sense of unity uh, needs, to, needs to go further and wider, you know, than, uh, in our communities, it needs to go with our neighbors. It needs to go with uh, with all levels of government. And um, <clears throat> but the most important thing is is for us uh, at, a, at a more local level um, is whatever we do, whatever we do, we we need to put love in all the efforts that we uh, that we make. We need to put kindness and compassion forward because that's. That's part of that's an, an essential part of the healing that is uh, that is required. When we uh, when we explain who we are and where we come from, we explain that that uh, that uh, distant relationship that we have uh, with our lands and our territories. It goes back to that distant past of Shkokwian, um, where our great transformers uh, transformed the landscape. Leaving us with all the teachings, you know, that we need to, to live by all the laws and principles and values, you know, that uh, that we need to foster, you know, within us. That needs to be shared, you know, uh, with a sense of unity with everyone who comes into our territory. And it's good to to promote the, the, those uh, those laws and those principles and values uh, in a way that people can understand it. We do that through ceremony. You know, we can do this together in ceremony, but there's ways that you can, others who come to our territory who fall in love with the beauty and wonder of, uh, of, uh, of what we have here, they too can develop and foster their own way of, uh, of uh, valuing all this, you know, and understanding, you know, the laws that, 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 that we have and the values that we share and the principles, the principles uh, um, 
of uh, of relating, you know, to to our 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 gifts from our Creator. So it's hard work, but it's good work. And when we put um, that uh, that uh, good hard work into it, um, then um, magic can happen. We just need to continue to, to strive for this. Uh, beautiful words. Uh, thank you, Eddie. Just very humbled to hear the appreciation and the connection on the importance of what unity is. And uh, just have a couple of pictures, just really identifying um, the beauty in the beginning. There was a picture of Mount Chiam. And she's the caretaker of our communities far and wide, Leith Lakay. And uh, this is a picture of the Fraser River. Uh, one of the pictures from Fred, Fred Meyerink's photos. And here we also have the pictures of um, our connection, our relationship with South Tumuk, Mother Earth, and also the value, the, value that water is life and how do we care and protect for in future generations wanted to acknowledge this wonderful canoe on the left is the beautiful stories and teachings that have gone back generations that we continue throughout the summer seasons to really connect communities all over um all over turtle island and bring these teachings so that we can protect and do the activities on the water with a good heart and a good mind. Have this wonderful picture of Lalani Diablo acknowledging 215 uh, with her beautiful regalia, along acknowledging the rich resources of Mother Earth, just that expression of gratitude and respect and honoring for everything that is that it has offered to us really identifying the special, each of these people, we don't see all the people in the dugout canoe, but we do know that they are creating their own special gift that was given to them from their ancestors and they're sharing a little bit in here today, not to show and promote, but to show and promote cultural identity and teachings, lifelong learning, teachings that will continue on for generations. It's really important to understand that our work doesn't end at the end of the day of nine to five. We we work through the day, through the seasons of the year uh, to ensure we're continuing on with our traditions. It's our role to continue this growth and understanding to support each other in every way we can. The water connects our 24 communities, but it also connects in a wider spread as we value the life of the salmon. We value the life of how the salmon takes care of us and the earth around us so we can continue these teachings. Chris, I. Great. Thank you so much, both uh, Gracie, Eddie, and I guess Laverne as well for, for sharing so much um, learning and so much um, things for us to reflect on as a group today. Um, so we do have a few questions for, for Gracie and Eddie that we thought we could go through. Um, just looking at the time, we also want to have time for open questions as well. Um, so Mike, kind of maybe we'll just focus on one or two of these questions, uh, Gracie and Eddie, but I'll go to the first to the first one now. Um, and this has been touched on a little bit, but when you think about the TRC and the 94 calls to action, what strike you as kind of the, the key kind of positive impacts that you've seen um, so far? So you mentioned kind of truth coming out, acknowledgement. Um, yeah, just wondering if you have any other uh, thoughts on, on that question there. Uh, maybe uh, Gracie to you first. Uh, over the last few days, we've been preparing these Every Heart Matter circles. Um, and the great part about creating these circles together is sharing them within our clinics and our hospital entrances um, to offer uh, teachings within our, our staff and community, um, you know, and also the wonderful pictures that are being shared everywhere within our organizations uh, really tells us that we are important and this day is important. Um, you know, the biggest kind of 
achievement or one of the great achievements locally is our primary care center, Mami Iethdal out, helping one another, supports our 22 communities from Boothroyd to Chilliwack. The words of be in good health is translated into Shweeth out for our sacred space room. In that room, we are addressing two of the calls to actions by sharing traditional wellness practices. We hope that this will continue to grow and develop mentorship uh, for all ages so they know what it is that they could assist to bring some balance of body, mind, and spirit. Just really wonderful to see and hear of all the people wanting to have uh, guest speakers, Indigenous community engagement events, uh, talking about what does a TRC mean to them and really wanting to connect with elders. It's all learning from each other and developing that respectful process, creating that common approach and awareness because it, we have to ensure to offer those respectful protocols and teachings because these times are very important for us. We want to make sure we share in a good way. So it's being respected in a good way when they're being asked. Uh, Eddie, you're welcome to share your thoughts. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> well, um, we have a, um, a, a growing uh, young population in, in our territory here. There, there's a lot of young people um, and uh, you can uh, you can see how thirsty they are you know for our culture they're very thirsty for for for, for our language uh, they're intimidated by uh, by learning the language and uh, uh, but they the more the more they see the language in the buildings the more they they can see uh, how it it can be used and and how beautiful the language is. They can grow, you know, in in um, in the revitalization of our languages, and uh, it's it's so good to see uh, um, uh, our language it at uh, Mami Eshtalout. Um I'm, I was so excited and and happy, you know, to 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 see that some of those teachings and and greetings and um, how that uh, that can be picked up, you know, by by our young people, but uh, by all people who uh, who come and and want to uh, to 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 learn our language. Um, we, <clears throat> I think that's uh, that's a, that's a very important part of our healing, and um, it's also imp important to. Uh, to make sure that we 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 continue continue you know to conduct a ceremony um, that cultivates the values of uh, of our people in this uh, territory and um, it's uh, it's really important to bring out song you know songs uh, uh, bring out harmony and it brings out positive powerful feelings that come from from your spirit and. Uh, uh, our young people are getting more and more uh, active and actively involved in that. And there's always a, a, a huge importance, you know, for uh, uh, for us to use, uh, continue to use uh, our our medicines, our foods, you know, our traditional foods. Um, we have a lot of uh, medicinal plants that are out there that can help us uh, uh, restore some of our um ailments that uh, that are out there um <clears throat> and um there's a, there's a lot of food you know that 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 we can uh, we can harvest from the land food that we can continue to harvest you know from uh from the waters you know from the river we're river people we're salmon people this is what we need to be healthy this is what we need to to feed our bodies and our souls and our spirits that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, absolutely critical, and that's why I was happy to see you know that uh, that uh, um, uh, Molly is it Molly Molly is uh, uh, bringing in uh, uh, those uh, those medicines and teaching people how to uh, uh, make those medicines, um, and um, 
yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's good to see all of that. Um, and <clears throat> uh, more, more, more space uh, uh, needs to be uh, there, you know, to to conduct uh, uh, healing circles, to conduct uh, uh, drumming and singing, because um, uh, that uh, that really really does a lot. Uh, uh, that that that's medicine. Our drums and our songs are medicine. Uh, that's a very important part of who we are you know, as a, as a people. Um, so yeah, those, uh, I think, uh, those are some of the positive impacts, uh, um, the, the, there, there's, there's so much, uh, 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 um, goodwill that is being cultivated. I think that's really important. The city of Chilliwack, uh, the current, the current, uh, chief and council, or not chief and council, but, uh, uh, mayor and council, they, 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 uh, they have shown that uh, they're willing, you know, to 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 work with us, to collaborate with us, and to understand us. Uh, more importantly, uh, I know that uh, Ken uh, Popov and his council, they're they're very very supportive of uh, of uh, installing a. Um, uh, a structure that would acknowledge, you know, that uh, five corners is the is actually uh, um, a, an ancient uh, Squaw village site, and uh, we are part of the Palau people, uh, along with Chiam and Kwa Kwa Apild. So uh, uh, that uh, that structure that recognizes uh, who we are uh, as Palau. And uh, acknowledging that uh, that we uh, uh, um, <clears throat> that that part of uh, that that uh, uh, we are such an integral part of the history of this place, um, and it needs to be uh, acknowledged not not only by way of this kind of symbol symbolism, but uh, by cultivating um, that mm -hmm. sense. That, that 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 genuine sense of uh, collaboration and cooperation uh, that's uh, that's what our ancestors want us to do uh, that's what we want to do and uh, we need uh, we need to cultivate uh, uh, continue to cultivate goodwill amongst us thank you Eddie um, I guess, uh, Gracie, do you, do we want to open up the floor maybe for some general questions, just so we have um, some time to, we do have some slides to go to afterwards, but I wonder if here's a good time to, to break for some questions from, from the audience. Sure, sounds good. Okay, great. Um, all right. So if anyone, if you'd like to ask a question to, to Gracie or Eddie, or um, even share kind of what, what today means to you or what your actions have been over the past year, um, we welcome you to kind of use the raise, raise your hand using that reaction button, or you can also post your questions in the chat. Um, and I'll, I can also read those out. Um, so yeah, if we can just take a pause for a few moments, if, if anyone like to like to ask a question today. There's, okay, see, uh, Laverne has another comment here. Let me just, um, yeah, I'll unmute you. All right, go ahead, Laverne, when you're able to. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, in my screen, I see that question of uh, what are some of the positive impacts of the TRC and the 94 calls to action um, there, there's so many things that I would love to share about uh, residential school being a survivor, but uh, there's just not enough time in the day, <laughs> and we're only here for a short while. Um, but I, I did want to share something about the, the positive impacts about the TRC and the calls to action. Okay. Um, uh, as a survivor, there's everything was, was taken from us, everything. Um, our identity, our, our, who we are, where we're from, everything, our, our innocence, our purity, um, just everything. And 
when when I look at you know since uh, residential school issues have been brought into light for for other people to know about um, since uh, the calls to action came about I, I've met with a lot of survivors over the years um, at many gatherings and um, there's a lot of people who can't and won't share their stories, but there have been a lot of people who can and will. And I think because of this, since this has come about, that a lot of survivors are, are ready to share some of their truths. And, and that's the important part of this reconciliation, the TRC. Um, it, it warms my heart to, to see our young ones participating in traditional gatherings, in our traditional ways of life, drumming, singing, dancing, because those are one of the many things that were taken from us. Um, they, they didn't succeed. Uh -huh. in, in some ways they did because of the thousands of, of unmarked graves that we're finding. In some ways they did succeed in killing some of the natives. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of us that are still here. Um, I mentioned on my Facebook page that um, I, I have three children that are here because I survived. Um, and I have seven grandchildren because I survived. And there are many survivors who have the same or similar stories that they could add and share that they have so many children that have survived and they have so many grandchildren or great grandchildren and they didn't succeed. We're still here and we're growing stronger and stronger every day, every, every day, every year every month that we practice our traditional cultural ways makes us stronger people. And that's a positive impact as I wanted to share. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, all my relations. Thank you so much, Laverne, for sharing. Great. Um, yeah, are there any other questions from others around kind of what Grace or Eddie presented or what was shared today? Just, um, yeah, welcome to, to raise your hand or post in the chat if you have a, a question or a comment to share with, with us today. Oh, I see a hand from, from Monica. Let me just unmute you there. Great, hey, Monica, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank um, Laverne in particular for her touching story, stories um, and account of, of uh, what she experienced. And um, to speak to that comment about um, the fact that people don't talk about these things sometimes. Sometimes people don't talk about these things. Um, obviously specific to uh, Canada's First Nation populations um, are starting to hear these stories. But there are there are other um, groups around the globe throughout history who have been through, I won't say equal trauma, that's ridiculous, but uh, in their own areas and their own peoples, they've been through traumas, they've been through um, genocides and things like that. And it doesn't matter how, but uh, my own family in, in our history has been through something similar. I, I don't speak my father's name. My father and his father don't speak about what their people went through. And um, what a loss it is to me as a human being to not hear their stories, to not know their language, to not be able to um, communicate or connect about those things. And so just to um, express gratitude for those who are willing to speak and discuss how, what a gift it is that they are being. Um, brave enough and willing enough to do those things. So uh, thank you so much. And Eddie and anyone who is willing to share these things, it's not easy. Uh, it's so incredibly important. So I just wanted to share that. I'm grateful to be here today. It's um, 
it's strange to think that this is a statutory holiday, right? People are considering this time off. This is a day off. Um, it is it is a free day, and yet um, this is so important. I'm so grateful to be. Thank you all. Thank you for sharing that, Monica. Great. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's any other questions, or it would also be great to hear, you know, what's, oh, I see another question hand raised there, um, pa Paula. Please let me know if I'm Hi. pronouncing that wrong. <laughs> you know, you're pronouncing that correctly. Hi, everyone. Um, so I just had a question, sort of, I guess, if you will, as a Canadian outsider, my parents are immigrants, and I know that many people in Canada, of course, are as well. And just as I'm learning about everything and, like, respectfully beginning to um, hear stories and everything. I was just wondering if, you know, besides being part of something like a webinar like this or, you know, learning more and um, hearing the stories, is there anything else um, that the community could do to support the First Nation? Again, like for people like myself, who is, I guess, quote unquote, an outsider to even the Canadian culture and all now to the First Nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a great question, and as myself, as a non-Indigenous person as well, um, that's that's a question on many of our minds. I'm wondering if Gracie, if you have any, Gracie or Eddie, any, any thoughts to share on that or, or recommendations? I can just start off with Eddie can continue. Uh, just having that uh, respectful Indigenous community engagement or connecting with a wonderful mentor or a knowledge keeper, a wonderful elder, uh, making the time to not have that set agenda, but to, to build that trust and relationship and just, um, just starting to learn a little bit more, especially with the community around you being familiar with all the Indigenous communities in which you are probably residing on a traditional territory of uh, so gaining awareness, whether it might be through uh, the Aboriginal education departments or um, uh, local Indigenous uh, or First Nations agencies, uh, making that uh, connection and building up on what you would like to continue to not only learn within your own values, but bring that back to your workplace. Yeah. Thanks, Gracie. Uh, Eddie, do you have anything to add on for that one? Or? Uh, yeah, I think uh, um, it's important for for all um, people who come to to Canada, whether you've been here for generations or or whether you're a more recent uh, immigrant. It's really, really important to to uh, take a really good look at the Constitution of Canada. Um, and, and uh, see that uh, our Aboriginal rights and entitlements are are uh, are included, you know, are enshrined in the, in the Constitution of Canada, and um, it's really important to uh, to stay abreast of uh, of uh, some of the issues that uh, that are are uh, dominating the 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 news about. Uh, about land defenders, about uh, missing and murdered Indigenous women, about uh, about racism and uh, in plain sight, Mary Ellen uh, Trapel Lafond has uh, written that uh, book, and it's uh, still pertinent in in today's uh, uh, world. Um, uh, where do you begin? Uh, well. Uh, I, I think at the at the more local level, it's uh, it's good to establish uh, uh, good relationships with uh, with uh, the, your neighbor, your indigenous neighbors, and get to know them. Get to get to uh, um, I guess uh, do that by um, uh, looking for looking for opportunities uh, uh, to. Uh, participate in uh, social and cultural and political activities that are going on that you may be invited to, to uh, uh, be a part of. Um, and then there's, uh, 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 we, we, we our, our culture is, uh, is uh, land-based. Um, it's, uh, um, and 
there are a lot of issues that we're facing right now regarding uh, regarding uh, uh, how how climate change is impacting you know the uh, the, the fish uh, and, and impacting the uh, rooted ones biodiversity in general. So indigenous peoples, uh, many indigenous peoples are at the forefront of, uh, of uh, trying to defend um, what sustains us. Uh, I, for one, uh, uh, I'm involved with the uh, Wild Salmon Defenders Alliance, as I mentioned before. And um, this, alliance, this is an alliance that, is, uh, that includes both indigenous and non-indigenous people. And, um, and uh, the goal is to ensure that uh, that uh, we have salmon, you know, for the next for the, for for future generations. And to do that, we need to remove uh, open net pin fish farms. We need to uh, take a good hard look at uh, what's going on with uh, how how uh, agricultural activities may be impacting, you know, the waterways of uh, of our salmon. Uh, um, many industrial uh, developments that are going on try to understand the issues that are going on with those um, and um, just know that uh, that the more you wade into it <laughs> the, the more it can become controversial and more it can, the more it can become uh, challenging and difficult um, and uh, just to just know that that as you take uh, things one step at a time um, you can uh, you can sort out where you want where you would want to put your energy, and um, where you'd want to put your 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 love and your 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 hard work, um, and uh, and do it. Just uh, just do it. Um, there's so many opportunities, you know, to to be engaged. Um, so I would invite you to uh, to explore all of the, uh, all of those. And you'll find your way uh, by making a, a genuine good attempt to uh, engage in uh, with, the, with that sense of goodwill that I talked about. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eddie. Um, there was another great question that, in the chat, but um, yeah, we're running out of time here. So uh, we will be sending out a, a feedback survey. So any questions that weren't answered today, uh, please feel free to share those in that in that feedback survey so that we can get back to you on those. Um, can, and uh, then Lisa, we can just ask, uh, I just asked Josh if you wanted just to share a couple of words. Oh, okay. I'll just Josh Cragen, thank you. I will be brief, Gracie. Thank you. And thank you, Laverne and Eddie, for your words, for your stories, for the things that you've shared. My, my question, which is a bigger question than we have time for, was really how do we take the stories and the witnesses and the message we've heard today to those who didn't feel it important to be here or who don't understand? And how do we create space for conversations to invite people into conversations that need to be had, those who are either apathetic or ignorant to those. And I just lean on the wisdom of, again, Gracie and Eddie and Laverne about the, the, the courage to share the stories, but then our collective responsibility to share that, to shift culture, to end racism, and ultimately make a better medical culture for each of us um, in both as providers, as patients. So that became too talky for a minute. And so I'll just leave it there and I just lift my hands to Gracie and Riker and Associates and Laverne and Eddie to say thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Eddie, this slide here was just about the Good Medicine songs. I don't know if you want to just briefly speak about that before people sign off today. Um, and just wanted to let you know that we are posting the resources and the supports available in the chat. Um, so please take a look at those before, before you go as well. And we will have this uh, recording shared um, on our website. So we'll be in touch with that. And so you'll have the materials there as well if you, if you don't have time to grab them today. Um, yeah, just go ahead, uh, Eddie. Okay. Uh, I. Um... I just want to uh, mention that uh, this is uh, another uh, really good uh, opportunity for people to to uh, stimulate their curiosity about uh, about uh, indigenous people. This uh, Chawiyas uh, with it, it's uh, uh, it's it's a song that uh, that we created out of uh, the um, uh, the two fifteen that were found up in Kamloops, right residential school. Um, and there are many other really good songs that uh, relate to uh, to our 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 uh, uh, Shwili, uh, 
uh, our life spirit, um, our sockeye, our our, our river, um, uh, um, our cedar trees, and the stories that uh, go to uh, how we relate to uh, our cedar trees. Uh, our ancestor Chape uh, is in each and every one of those, and. And our cedar tree represents generosity. That's just a very small insight about what that, that's about. But there's a lot of powwows. There's a lot of uh, um, cultural activities that invite others to uh, to uh, partake and and uh, and um, have an opportunity to uh, to understand, you know, who we are and where we come from. Um, and so uh, it's 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 uh, encouraging people, challenging people, and encouraging people to uh, to develop a, a a really healthy curiosity about uh, about uh, the indigenous people in your in your area. So I, I would begin there, and uh, um, yeah, there, there's probably many other things that we I could think of, but uh, <laughs> uh, we don't have any time, and maybe. You know, others can pitch in. Ocean. Thank you so much. And Gracie, do you have any final final words or things you'd like to share before we sign off today? Um, sure, we could go to the Every Heart Matters um, slide. And also, if we just backtrack two seconds, remember from today and continued 364 more days of the year, keep in mind and identify what kind of ancestor would you like to be remembered as? Um, the next slide identifies those wonderful words of Cumlet set of how we believe within our primary care network, within our indigenous worldviews, within we hope throughout Turtle Island that every heart matters. I acknowledge Laura Wheelock for creating this design and for me to share it widely because the importance is to continue this act of reciprocity, continue to the learning and sharing and promoting and being kind and being caring for one another on a special day of reflection. Uh, thank you wholeheartedly uh, from uh, my family to yours. Kosai. Thank you so much, Gracie. Thank you so much, Eddie, and for everyone else for attending today. Um, it was incredible to share this time with you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, my uh, my hands go up to all of you for uh, for participating in this uh, webinar and uh, uh, may this uh, spark a little bit of joy in your, your in your life. May it uh, inspire you a little bit to and then motivate you a little bit to learn a little more um, about the significance of uh, truth and reconciliation, what it means to all of us as uh, as uh, people human beings. Oh, it's here. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you.